Serving applications from the edge seems like the new hotness. In fact, people are selling the edge like it solves everything. But that's really not the case. There's one big oversight when it comes to databases that basically mitigates any performance gain you would get from hosting your application at the edge. Let's talk about it. So before we get into a hands-on demo, let's take a look at architecturally how applications have been hosted and how that changes with the edge. So typically with most apps, we have a database and the app actual application and they're hosted together in the same data server. Now in this diagram, I've got three different kind of regions, the Americas, Europe, and Asia. This is obviously a very oversimplified version of this, but this gives us a little bit of an idea of how different requests are gonna be made. So let's say we have our database and our app hosted in US East one, where, whatever it is in the Americas, and let's say we have a user in the Americas. Well, it makes sense that this user is going to make a request straight from that user to the actual application. Both the application and the user and the database are in the Americas, so that's gonna be relatively fast. Now, what happens when we have a user over in Europe? Well, that request is now having to happen all the way from this user back to the application again. So you can see this is gonna be a little bit longer. And then if we replicate this one more time into Asia, this is going to be even longer. And this is because the speed of light is a real problem. The further a request has to go, the longer it's going to take. That's just inevitable. So how do we change this? Well, what we started to look at is, okay, maybe we can start to host our application in multiple different regions. So if we replicate an application, let's do just a copy and paste on this, and let's just replicate another instance of this application in Europe. Well, this is great because now, if we get rid of some of these arrows, we can take uh, the user that's in Europe and we can just make a request directly to the application in Europe. Now we're missing the database part because we'll come back to that in a second. And then we say, okay, well, what if we just replicate this again uh, and let's host another one in Asia? Well, now we can add an arrow from this user to this application. And now those users request going to the application server themselves are quicker than they had been because they're co-located or closer located to where they are geographically other than, or as opposed to the request going all the way from wherever the user is back to the central application server in the Americas. So let's move this around a little bit. Let's move these down. Let's just kind of stack the database and the app. So what happens now is even though the user's request to the application is closer and faster, the application now is having to make requests all the way over to the database itself. So same thing from over here. And this basically is mitigating any of the time spent or time saved by making the requ requests closer to the app. Because now the application is having to make the request all the back, all the way back to the database in the original location. And this is the kind of this is kind of the idea with the edge, where we're not just replicating applications in three different regions across the world. We're actually doing this in multiple different ways or in multiple different locations within a given region. So you might actually have something that looks more like this. You might have five or six different instances of your application deployed in a given region. So we can replicate these all over the place in each one of these. All right, so we have applications deployed in each of these regions, multiple instances of them, but each one of these is still having to make its request all the way back to the original database. And this is the thing that often gets overlooked is just by deploying your, your application to the edge doesn't mean it's inherently faster depending on what sort of interactions it has to do with its database and where that database is located. Now, most databases by default are set up to have one instance, just like applications were several years ago. And now database platforms are starting to pick up on the fact that this data needs to be replicated so that it can be faster. So what happens in an edge database is for each one of these application instances, you potentially get another copy of your database. So we could replicate all of these out here and we can replicate them over and over and over again. And keep in mind, this comes with a cost, but the benefit of this now is these arrows for the app actual application, they're no longer going back to the Americas. They are now going from app to database, app to database, et cetera. So you can see that now, if we're able to replicate our databases along with the instances of our application, the total request time now is significantly lower than what it was originally. Because instead of the user going all the way to the original application, they have a more centralized or local application deployed instance on the edge. And then that application, its request now is making a request to a more local, closer located database. So this is where we get the true performance benefit of hosting applications at the edge is when the database is working with it in tandem. Let's take a look at a specific example to see what this looks like. Now for the hands-on portion, we're gonna use a relatively new product called Torso, who is the sponsor of this video. 
Now, Torso is an open source fork of SQLite. Product is called LibSQL. And so some of the cool things about this, it has a much smaller footprint than Postgres. It is built for speed and, speed and the edge. You can replicate this in regions all across the world. We'll actually see that hands-on in a second. It is easy to replicate if you want, want to run SQLite on your local machine while you're doing dev or testing. It's also easy to replicate from a CI CD environment because you, you can just throw up a flat file database and have it all ready to go. So this product is pretty exciting. Let's actually see what it looks like to use this. Now I already have the uh, Torso CLI already uh, installed on my machine and already configured. So I've already logged in and then inside of here, I'm gonna create a new database. So you see I have a Node.js application and we're just gonna make a request uh, to the Torso client. So let's go ahead and enable this. So we're gonna create the database, make a request, show the timing of it, and then kind of move our location around. So let's save this file and let's go in and we'll run the command of torso db create and then just call this my db2 for example and uh, by default this is going to create uh, the database in ashburn virginia so this is basically like a us east one on the eastern part of of the united states all right so it looks like that was created now we can do a torso db shell and then the name of the db that we're working with so this will give us a shell connected to our uh, SQLite database. And I am going to take a couple of these commands. So just a create table user command. So we'll run that. So that created the user's table. And then we will just insert in a random record. And so now we should have a record inside of our databases or inside of our table. And we can now say uh, select star from users. And if I type that correctly, uh, let's actually go back select star from users. All right, so you see we get that data back, which is great. Now, what I want to use in here is the connection string. So right now this thing is deployed in US East. So let's actually query this, run this in an application to show the timing of being able to query something that's relatively close. And then we'll make a replica of this on the other side of the world and show that querying that is much longer because of how far it has to travel. And then I'll show you how Torso can kind of automatically handle sending you to the right direction based on your location and which one is closer. Now, this is basically the equivalent of deploying applications at the edge where your edge deployment deployed applications will now be able to make a general request to Torso and it will kind of forward it to the right instance of the database. All right, so to get the details of this database, we're gonna run torso db show, and then we'll give it the name of the db. So this is my db2. And so we have in here our URL. So let's go ahead and copy this. And then we'll put this into the client URL. So this is using the libsql uh, client package that you can work with in Node.js. So I've already got that set up. And now we need to get our auth token. So I've got a command that I'm gonna paste in here. So torso db tokens create, and then we'll create a token for that database with no expiration for testing here. So this will generate our auth token, and we can just take this and copy and paste it right into here. And now we can run this application just to show the original logging or timing of how long this takes to run. So inside of this index endpoint, what we're doing is just logging how long it takes to run this command, which is doing a basic query on that database. Now we're not getting into like super big databases and complex queries. We're just showing the impact of geographically where your database is located and where you're making the request from and how that can negatively impact your performance. So let's go ahead and run this application, npm run dev. And we just need to go and refresh this endpoint and we should get a log of 41 milliseconds. And if we do this a few different times, we'll see this is about in the 40 millisecond range or 30 to 40 millisecond range. You can see all those there. So that's great, but what happens now if we get into a replica and we create a replica that's on the other side of the world and we try to query that? That's not going to be ideal, but this is gonna show the potential negative impact that this can have on your application if you're not querying from a nearby location. So inside of the documentation, there is a command to create a replica inside of Japan. I think this is Tokyo, Japan. So let's go ahead and run this command. This is about as easy as it gets to create replicas of a database. Again, creating this in Tokyo, Japan. Now, what's interesting is what we put in originally was kind of a generic URL for this database. So what if we swap that to specifically point to the database instance that just got created in Japan? We should see the performance decrease and we should see the amount of time the individual request takes increase. So let's do a show of this, my DB2. 
And so here's the information about our main instance, but let's copy this one to get details specifically about this new instance that we just created. Notice that these kind of fun names down here are automatically created for us and they represent the primary, which is the original one that we created and now the secondary or replica, uh, actually replica, which is in Japan. So what if we wanna get details to that? What if we wanna get that URL? Well, let's take this one and let's copy and paste this into the URL. So what we're saying now is now we wanna specifically query the instance of our database that is farther away. So again, originally we saw 30 to 40 millisecond times. Now we should see uh, much higher times. So let's do npm run dev here and just go back to our endpoint and refresh a few times. And we should see 350 to 415 milliseconds or so. So somewhere in the 350, about 400 milliseconds range, which is significantly higher than the 30 to 40 millisecond range. Now, what's cool is that if we go back to this original URL we had, I don't have a way to replicate this without running this code on a server on the other side of the world. But with this generic URL, Torso is gonna figure out how to route it to the most effective and closest database to read data from, database instance. So if we were running this code in Japan, it would query from that instance in Japan instead of coming all the way back over to the US. Now, again, I swap back out that URL and I'm back now to times that are around the 30 to 40 millisecond range. So just by using replicated instances of our database and being able to intelligently connect to the appropriate or closest one, we're able to significantly decrease the amount of time it takes to make that request. This is incredibly important when looking at deploying applications to the edge, because as your applications are deployed to instances all over the world, making each of them make a request back to a database only in the US or only in one location is sacrificing all of the benefit that you would have potentially gotten from the deployment to the edge. So having these replicated instances now makes that quicker and easier from different locations across the world. So you might be wondering though, how does this affect the performance of the actual database interactions? So we talked about reading from a database is now we can read from instances that are closer to the application or closer to the user. But what about writes? Well, the way Torso works and the way a lot of databases work is you write to a location and those writes get replicated behind the scenes to the rest of the instances. That means that you could potentially write to one instance and then read stale data from another instance. Now this is the staleness goes away within milliseconds. So it's not a huge concern, but it is something to know that you may be able to write data here, read from over here and have not gotten that replicated data yet. So it's called eventual consistency where you know eventually when I query over here, what I wrote originally will be available to me and I will have the most up-to-date information. Hey, it's James from the future with one clarification here. So if you are connected to a replica instance and you try to do a write, it will proxy that to the primary database. But if you then try to read from that same instance, it will make sure to read the latest data. So you only have this issue with eventual consistency if you're writing from one instance and then trying to read from another instance on the other side of the world to another replica set that hasn't gotten the data replicated to it yet. So that's where the potential question of eventual consistency comes in. But Torso already has some logic to help mitigate that if you're writing and reading from the same replica. Now, what's really cool about this as well is you don't have to choose which instance you're writing to. So if you remember, we did a torso show DB and then my DB2. I think it's DB DB show. It lists in here the primary and the replica. So writes can only happen to the primary, but from a code perspective, you don't have to determine, you don't have to write code to specifically write to that instance. By using this generic connection string, you can write to any instance. And what happens behind the scenes is it's actually proxying that write behind the scenes without you having to do anything to the actual primary. And then it will replicate that out to the replicas, just like we talked about with eventual consistency. So you don't have to keep track of multiple different connection strings. Torso will take care of routing your writes to the original primary instance. And then again, that will be replicated to all the different replicas. Eventual consistency says, I will be able to read that stuff and it will be consistent with the rest eventually. So something to keep in mind with how read intensive your applications are, how real time or near real time do they need to be. But the benefits of being able to replicate these instances across the world can significantly improve the performance of your applications, especially when you're taking advantage of deploying your applications to the edge. So I'm curious, how far along are you on this edge journey? Do you have anything deployed? And are you having any struggles with gaining the performance that people promise by leveraging the edge? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. 
Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.